Welcome Steelers Nation, I'm Stan Saverin. It's my great pleasure to welcome in a member of the Steelers all-time team, John Cole, four-time Super Bowl champion. John, great to see you. Thank you, great to see you. Third round draft pick out of Oklahoma State, a country boy, if you will. Uh, I'm wondering what your thoughts were when you got drafted and had to go to the big city of Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's not what most people think. I, I again, uh, grew up in Oklahoma. I'd never been east of Little Rock, Arkansas. We played the University of Arkansas there. And my mother was from Pittsburgh, Kansas. My sophomore year, we played uh, University of Oklahoma. They had an All-American nose tackle. And we beat, beat OU and hadn't beaten them in a few years. And, and, and so that was a Saturday game on Tuesday. I got a phone call and a letter from the San Diego Chargers. I'm a sophomore. So over the next three years, we didn't have, they didn't have the combines. I'd heard from every single team except the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so as it got closer to draft day, people would say, where do you think you're going? And I would tell, all I know is I won't be going to Pittsburgh. <laughs> and I had told enough people that. And uh, I thought the draft was like choosing up sides in the backyard. I'll take Stan, I'll take Craig Wolfley, okay, I'll take John Cobb and the whole thing would be done in an hour. And so when the early afternoon hat came and I hadn't been drafted, I mean, nobody called me, I thought it was over. So I was really disappointed to begin with and I walked, so I think I'll go work out. So I walk in the dressing room and there's all my friends, half my teammates, college teammates, and they're around the phone and it's just too perfect so they're up to something. And I said, you got a phone call. I said, who is it? They said, the Pittsburgh Steelers, somebody named Rooney. And I'm going, <laughs> yeah, right. Because I told them I'm not going to Pittsburgh. So then uh, you have to have been around Mr. Rooney, Mr. Rooney, and, and he's unflappable. And he goes, John, that's the way he talked. And, and I said, at first I said, yes, sir. And he said, you know, he introduced himself and said that I'd just been drafted by the Steelers. And I go, yeah, right. You know, and so he said, we're really excited to have you. And are you excited to be coming to Pittsburgh? And I said, no. <laughs> and I, I was just so rude. <laughs> because I, was, I thought, this is such a terrible thing. Uh, you know, because I, I was disappointed walking in there because I'd been for the last three or four years just thinking ever since San Diego, this is what I want to do. I want, I'm going to get a chance to play pro, pro football. And my dream was crashed. And so I didn't think this was funny. And so then that night, nobody else called. And so I thought, I'll turn on the news and see where my friends are going. And so the news comes on, the sports. And this is in Oklahoma City. And I remember they say Eddie Hinton of the University of Oklahoma going to the Baltimore Colts, John Cole going to the Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Brown, my roommate, going to uh, Minnesota. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was really the Pittsburgh Steelers. That was the real deal. So the next day I call like at seven in the morning and Mr. Rooney, he, he's just laughing. He thinks it's funny. and. Uh, when, and here's, a, here's, here's what makes this right now special, because he was there at St. Vincent College, and when I got out of the car, they picked me up at the airport. First time I stepped foot, St. Vincent College, and he was there to shake my hand and, and welcome me. And, <laughs> and then I got to play 13 years, and then Coach 10, and, and Mr. Rooney would come into the meetings. And when he'd walk in the meetings, 14, 15 years later, I'd say, Mr. Rooney, I am so sorry <laughs> that I was so rude to you. <laughs> and he would laugh, you know. And, and, and so I, that's a, I appreciate the question because it really characterizes the, the ownership of the Steelers. And I was thinking about it yesterday. Think, think, I mean, Chuck No, Cal, Bill Cowher, and uh, Mike Tomlin. Tackle, Mike Tomlin, Tackle Trap. Uh, yeah, three classic guys that have been there since 1969 when Chuck came. That right there says something about the Rooney's. And of course the ownership is still in the family in the, from in the, the family. chief to yeah. Dan and now to Art II. Um, you were part of the beginning of the Renaissance. You drafted the same year as Joe Green, uh, Terry Hanratty came in that draft, LC came in that draft. 
Uh, and I'm wondering, if not in 69, it was a bad year, 1 in 13, but in the subsequent years, John, and you became a starter in 71, did you sense that something special was being built there? I did, because uh, it looked that, you're right, 1 in 13, and by the way, we won, we beat Detroit, beat Detroit's first game. And I thought, this is cool. This pro <laughs> football thing, all I did was L1 on the kickoff. And a couple weeks later, we're playing uh, Green Bay, and Ray Nitschke is right there in front of me, Ray Nitschke. I watched Ray Nitschke, I'm in the fifth grade. So early on, you know, we're, at that time we're one and four, but no, it's okay. We'll, but then we're one and 13. But Chuck never wavered. That's, that was Chuck, no, he, he, he never wavered. He, he had a plan, he stuck with, stuck with it, and he just kept building. And he must have known the Roonies and the type of people they were. And, 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 uh, and each year, you know, it, you could see um, Chuck doesn't, you know, the, the game has changed from a game of Chuck being a technician to we're, we're more like Dallas Cowboys used to be. You know, it's, it's a chess match with coaches are going to put people in all kinds of formations and move them around and hope somebody makes a mistake and it's complicated. The game ain't complicated. It's not complicated and Chuck understood that and he stood to, got to get back to basics. You know, I still think of Chuck no isms, whatever it takes, get back to basics, and that's what he stuck with. Your offensive line was so efficient and so good and deserved more Pro Bowl recognition, but I'm wondering, because you were basically together and Chuck ran that intricate trap game, uh, that cohesion, uh, was that just something natural? Did it develop over time? And how significant was that in the great running teams and running backs that you had? Boy, that is, thank you. That's a, that's a great question, and I think it comes back to what I was trying to say a while ago. Uh, today's game, they, now they'll do uh, their version of zone blocking, but essentially everything is, is the, the man in front of you. When you're crisscross, not only did we trap, but we ran tackle traps. So that's a different read for the linebackers. One of my favorite pictures that people sent me is we ran a, a tackle trap in Cleveland and uh, Dick Ambrose, their middle linebacker, is thinking Sam's pulling, Sam's blocking back. And so then he discounts as a trap and he just goes running through this open hole. Bang, you get a chance to ear hole somebody. And that's what the game's about for a, for a lineman is if, you know, we're really nice guys. So if we can <laughs> ear hole somebody, you know, bang. And, uh, and then there's this pitch, it's in the in, infield, and then there's Rocky, who, you know, played all those years and never made a cut. And that was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there's Rocky got the ball, and, and there's, uh, it's on the infield, and the gravels for flying up. And, uh, and so, yeah, that, tra that whole trapping scheme, Jerry Mullins, Sam Davis, uh, uh, those guys, uh, Steve Corson, but Jerry Mullins and Sam Davis, they, they have PhD in running traps. And I remember when I first started, uh, I never ran traps and I'm just, my nose is just getting smashed. And, and Sam said one day, John, you got the wrong target. You know, and it's like shooting trap. You know, if you're shooting at the bird, you'll never hit it, you gotta shoot in front of it. And when you're trapping, you know, you want to trap the guy's hip. You don't want to hit the shoulder pads, but if you're looking at the hip, you'll hit the shoulder pads. And Sam said one day, look at his knee, trap his knee. Tried that, man, hit the hip, blows people. And that's our term, we want to blow things up. You know, because you don't want to push, you want to blow it up. And that's what traps allow you to do. I remember that run by Rocky in Cleveland, I'll never forget it, you're right, or <laughs> flat-footed, and uh, he made it though, he made it. Yeah. Uh, John, a lot of people think that the Steelers came of age with the Immaculate Reception game. Greatest play, perhaps, Super Bowl history. Uh, but I'm wondering if winning the championship and beating the Raiders um, after they had had that great game with Miami and Chuck stood in front of you guys and said the best football team is right here in this room. I'm wondering if that indeed wasn't the linchpin for the dynasty. I think you're, I think again, you're, you're, you're right on track. Um, 
because, um, yeah, because, you know, we wanted to play physical football. I think the Raiders were a physical football team. And you, and you need, that's what's fun about football. You know, it's not, a, it's not a negotiation thing, you know. And I think, again, what we were talking about in the last few minutes is you want to go out and, uh, and when I say establish, I'm, this is a Chuck No quote, you want to establish your will against your opponent. And that's what's the beautiful thing about football. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about the word authority. And essentially, if I can translate that, authority is, is what you do on a football field. From snap to whistle, you're the, now you, after the game, you put on your, and you walk out and shake hands with everybody. But on that football field, you want to establish your will, your authority, and what better place to do it than the Oakland Raiders. When you do, you know, Dallas, again, they wanted to fool you. Their fans go, yay. Our fans are just like, falling out of the stands and, you know, just, uh, and, and uh, the whole, I saw a uniform, I saw a shirt the other day, it just was so cool, and it said, uh, in Pittsburgh, football's not a game, and in the back it said, it's a way of life, and, and so playing the Raiders established that way of life thing, you know, and I think you're right on with that. This is like asking you, which of your children is your favorite? Yeah. But of the four Super Bowl victories, do you have a favorite for whatever reason? I, I kind of developed that. Uh, yes. Uh, the first one, obviously, we you know, were playing, never done this before. You're playing in the Super Bowl. Uh, remember thinking uh, my little hometown of Wass, Oklahoma? We had 67 kids in our graduating class thinking, gee, this is pretty good. I bet some of those people watching this game but the the third so we won two Super Bowls and then we were in the playoffs but didn't make it to the Super Bowl and then we go back to the Super Bowl against Dallas and and Dallas was the returning defending Super Bowl champion for that what's that Super Bowl 13 and Harvey Martin and Randy White were the MVPs from that Super Bowl year they beat Denver they they right they beat Denver and and so there was typically Sam and I could kind of slide in under the radar, get get all ready for a game, and all the attention was on Stallworth and Swanee and and Brad and Franco, but there was a lot of because those two guys were MVPs the year before, and they were having a great year in the playoffs this year, and so uh, people like yourself were actually talking to us before the game, uh, you know and. Uh, and uh, so the night before the game, they had recorded Harvey Martin uh, on the Johnny Carson show or some show. But anyway, so I mean, I'm just locked myself into my hotel room and uh, my wife's sitting there. And so they play this, you know, uh, interview with Harvey Martin asking him if he was going to be MVP again and this kind of stuff. And so I'm watching it, and I want to turn it off because as I'm watching it, you know, I, I, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff's going on. And my wife's not helping. She's going, "Did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? Did you? He, he just said he was going to, yeah." And so, uh, you know, watch the film. I don't have to say anything. The results are on the film. Um, and uh, so, just from. Uh, yeah, and the first play of the game, I can't remember. Any, I can't remember any plays. The first play of the game was 19 straight. That's Franco. Made seven, seven yards. Second play, we already talked about it, 92 tackle trap. We ran the tackle traps. Because Chuck would call the first two plays of a game. So you knew you were ready. And so the first two plays, I had the opportunity to make up a, a key block. First one was 19 straight, Franco. Rocky leading, second was that 92 tackle trap, and boom, got to blow that up and, and first down. And that set the tempo, and so I guess to answer your question, uh, you, you know what, you wanna contribute, no matter what you're doing, you know, you gotta say, am I contributing to this cause? And, and so that was, that was special in that way.
Can't spell cat without spotting the CA. That was another. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to close with this, John. You alluded to it earlier about Steeler fans and just the confluence of Chuck, the players, the city, the fans. You've spent your post career in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, was it all, like you said, the perfect storm for you? Steelers, Pittsburgh, Western Pennsylvania? So I was, uh, I have three sons, I'm really blessed. And uh, my middle son coaches at West Virginia University and he's really into whitewater kayaking now. And so we had uh, kayaked the middle fork of the Salmon River and I do it upside down, not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> just banging my head on the rocks. So we're coming back from that trip and uh, our second calls, I think we're probably in Wyoming. We're coming back from that trip. I'm just saying, thank you, Lord, I got through this river again. And he told me about this weekend and, and, and they call it honor. They, they, they call it honor. And what they can't, that's a, what a, yeah, it's such an honor. And I'm in the truck with my son, and I, I, I did. I just kind of, uh, uh, somewhere in Wyoming, when he told me, I just thought about the fans, the coaches. Uh, I had two best offensive line coaches ever, Dan Radakovich, Raleigh Dodge. They were technicians, they were biomechanics. Uh, again, it was a perfect storm. I had teammates, Sam Davis, Jerry Mullins, uh, Larry Brown. Larry Brown, how about this? Our people start, Larry Brown, close grips, bench press, 495 with his thumbs touching. Just, uh, we had these group of guys that were just amazing.